Today on International Women's Day, I'm here with the chair of the PACE Committee on Equality and Non-Discrimination, Petra Bayer, to take a look at progress in representation of women in politics and decision-making in Europe. Thanks for inviting me to talk about this, Rick, and for your support for equal participation of women and men. You are right. There has been progress in women's leadership, but progress is much too slow. Ministries given to women are usually related to the family, children and youth, the elderly, the disabled, women affairs and gender equality. And those with the biggest budgets considered to carry the most weight are still the privilege of men. Women need to have confidence in themselves and women and men must work together to overcome stereotypes and share power. Political parties also need to renew their base. Europe has some inspiring women leaders, but only 10 countries worldwide have women heads of state out of nearly 200 countries. At this rate, equality in the highest positions will not be reached for another 130 years, can you imagine? So our objectives are still way out of reach. And women are still cast in traditional roles without collective responsibility or decision-making outside of family life. Looking at women and men in parliaments, IPU figures show that in 2020, 16 Council of Europe member states had women speakers, which is about one third. In the parliamentary assembly, percentages of women and men in K positions have leveled off over the past couple of years. Women counted for 36% of full members in 2020 compared to 34% in 2019. Women vice presidents actually dropped from 41% to 25. We should really be doing better. And we need to think about the cost of unequal participation. We just can't afford to continue ignoring the knowledge and experience we are losing by excluding women. Well, Europe doesn't always lead the way, you know. I've been told that the country with the highest share of women in parliament is Rwanda. Our numbers compare pace with national parliaments where numbers are often even lower especially in the more conservative upper houses where there's only one lady. There have so far been only four women presidents of our assembly and 28 men. I mean, I'm in a position to know. This again is better than elsewhere, but you'll agree it's still not good enough. Fair representation is essential. Women demonstrated their leadership qualities during the pandemic. Women leaders were held as examples of the best management of the crisis in their countries from New Zealand to Finland and Iceland. The pandemic has put sharp focus on these women, but in fact, women have been managing crisis for decades and for centuries. It's nothing new. The post-COVID world must be fairer, more sustainable. We need to learn the lessons of this crisis, change our perspectives and prioritize equality. The year we've all just lived through has put focus on women's roles as key workers, health carers, service staff, family supporters, teachers, and their importance has been recognized up to a point. But we still don't have fair and equal pay for these essential jobs, support for women with family responsibilities, recognition for career breaks. We need to learn from the pandemic to put this right and ring fence women's rights. Media exposure is also essential. Women essential workers were hardly ever on TV and media platforms. Most experts consulted uh, are men. Decision makers are men and you can go on. COVID has deepened existing problems. Women's family tasks increased and careers and public participation were put on a back burner, unfortunately. Eklantina Gjermeni, the chair of our subcommittee on gender equality, is preparing a report on the participation of women from underrepresented groups in political life and decision making. Petra Stinen, our first vice chair, wrote a report on the gender dimension of foreign policy. 
These reports contain very clear guidelines for bringing change and about what leadership qualities should be. We have the tools, we have the expertise, parliaments must use them and act on them. There can be no end to violence against women without real equality. Male domination is at the root of extreme forms of violence, honor crimes, female genital mutilation, child marriages. My predecessor, Lilian Mohi Pasquier, launched the Not In My Parliament initiative after interviews revealed that a staggering 85% of women members of parliament had experienced psychological harassment. Equality between women and men is the tip of the iceberg. Unequal participation and representation also affect young people, national and ethnic minorities, Roma and travelers, indigenous peoples and many more. The study of intersectionality sheds light on the challenges to people from several or multiple underrepresented or discriminated groups at once. Our committee is going to look at how other underrepresented groups are doing and we will definitely be making some recommendations later in the year. I think our exchanges have shown just how much we can and should do and indeed it is our responsibility to do so as citizens and as politicians. Men and women need to push together more forcefully for change to come. I very much look forward to the Equality Committee's further work on this and of course you can count on me, on my support as President of the Assembly in the months to come.